Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here's the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, from your favorite niche land website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today, I've got the man, the myth, the legend, on vacation. Actually, literally on vacation. He's Skyping me from his iPhone at a pool with his kids and wife, just minutes from the beach. In where are you, Duran? In Florida? Atlantic Beach, Florida, baby. Atlantic Beach, Florida. He's your favorite. He's my favorite. Duran Frazier from LandHub.com. Duran, how's vacation? It's amazing. Thank you. It's, it's a little it's a little stressful watching two kids run around a pool when you've asked them a hundred times to stop running. But uh, but we still enjoy it. You know, we're having a good time. We're right next to the beach. We have a res- we're literally on a resort that overlooks the ocean. So it's either the beach or the ocean. It's great. That's great. And uh, I love the fact that we can hear your kids in the background. Yeah, no, those kids are, uh, two of them are mine, but if you hear noises, they're most likely my kids, um, either hurting or harming another child or, <laughs> or hurting or harming each other. See, now I love the commitment to the podcast. Even though you're on vacation, even though you're playing with the kids, you're taking a half hour out of your vacation to uh, share with us your wisdom and knowledge about real estate, land, startups. So... I just want to thank you. That's that's really that's really big. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's uh, it is it is dedication, but uh, but it's also a little break for me from uh, from the life of being um, a lazy. Uh, what what would you call it? Maybe a lazy entrepreneur right now, sitting at the beach, hanging out at uh, the pool, which I do enjoy, but I do like to work a little bit here and there too. Right, right. And you know, I think it's important because in in our society. It's always, it's kind of like this badge of honor uh, to be a workaholic, right? Work, work, work. I got four hours sleep last night. You know, what did you get, Bob? Uh, you know, and it's, and really what, ter- you know, there's been studies done and you're less productive when you don't take these breaks, when you don't recharge your batteries. That's why, you know, every, every day at three o'clock, I meditate for 20 minutes. I take a nice break. I'll take breaks. I'll take a walk outside. Just clear my head. I just find myself more productive than somebody who's, you know, sits down at their desk, takes a 30 minute lunch and, you know, works a 12 hour day, just kind of plows through stuff. It, it turns out the quality of the work suffers. So it's, it's more, you know, quality over quantity. What do you, what do you think of that? I t- totally agree, which is why uh, you and I have been doing business the way we've done over the last 15 years. Um, you know, but, but I will agree. So I've, I've got, I've, I've got my little guy screaming at me in the background here who, who I, I'm pretty sure he'll be just like me when he's older, uh, type A personality. Um, but anyways, no, I totally agree. Um, and that's just my mentality is, you know, pushing forward by, you know, working in increments of, of efficiency and taking breaks to kind of, like you said, recharge the brain because, because in reality, if we don't sit by the pool and relax and enjoy life, which I've told you many times, I sit at the cost of pool in a while and I just open my laptop and work that way. Um, so it's uh, for me, it's it's uh, definitely something I enjoy doing, but it definitely does help me. Right, right. No, I mean, so, yeah, yeah, no, it's it's great. It's great that you can combine the two. You know, yeah, it's yeah. It, 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 then it, then it doesn't feel so much like work, right? Totally. Now, I think, you know, it's funny, you ask me these questions a lot, like, as if I'm the only guy living like a rock star. But in reality, if you guys all know Mark, I mean, Mark's probably, you know, in his Speedo right now, laying (laughs) poolside um, at his mega mansion in Scottsdale, Arizona. So it's probably not all that bad for him either. You you know, uh, you know, what's so funny is that, you know, I'm I'm sitting in in the, or I'm sitting, you know, I'm not sitting, you know, I've got got the treadmill desk. And uh, I look out my window it's my backyard and it's just, you know, lush green. I see the pool. It's really relaxing. It's, it's, it's not a real stressful environment. Now I am going to get an office now as, as I'm growing. But even then, like I was talking to my wife, like I want to get an office that has a nice gym. And so yeah. I can, you know, I can work, go there, work out, 
and and be productive and and uh, you know has room for the the treadmill desk and I think I think it's really important you know long term but you know the great thing about our land business is that we're making money in our sleep we're making money when we're on vacation because yeah. of the land notes so we're getting payments in while we're gone like I mean you know there's no better feeling than when I was in Wisconsin with the kids at the Dells and we're at the, you know we're playing at these water parks and I, you know at the end of the day I'll check my email and I'll see you know payment from you know here notecollection.com authorized.net.com payment 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 and we don't stress about the cost of the vacation it's it's all being paid for yeah yeah it's uh it, it is an amazing feeling and it's interesting i was watching uh, i don't know what it was i took a few minutes i think this morning my my youngest was still sleeping and i jumped on the computer and i was pointed to some uh real estate um a we website where a guy was talking and i was listening and i was going man you know it's so funny because he, I hear, there are so many real estate websites that talk about flipping houses and and making a profit and how you can do it with no money down i mean but then in reality, the truth, the truth is you can't do it. Like you can do it, but you got to really work hard. But with land, you don't have to work that hard. With land, it's not that challenging to do. Um, and, it, and it makes total sense. Where, and there's, no, there's nobody out there doing it. I mean, there really isn't. There's such a huge market for land. And, and, and there's so many ways to market it. Yet, yet everybody's focused on single family homes. So, you know, will, will there be, a, will there be another crash in the single family home market? Sure, there will be, but land never really went back up like family homes did. And so I think there's still a huge opportunity there. Yeah, there's, there are, you know, hundreds of thousands of deals out there. I mean, there's so much out there and it's yeah. interesting because, you know, a after the Vegas seminar, I'd get questions like, you know, if we're all doing this, won't this become saturated? If we're all going after the same counties and we're all sending out, you know, offers to the same counties, don't, you know, aren't, doesn't that become saturated? And, and the, rea the reality of it is I haven't seen any statistical proof that the more people that are doing this, the, the fewer deals. I mean, have you ever had an issue with deal flow? No, and I and, and and going back to there is so much land. I think and I think I was telling this either last podcast or the podcast before. And there's 800 from a research that I've done. There's 880 million private private acres owned owned by citizens of the United States, which that's a lot of land. It's a lot of land. 80 million acres. That's a lot of friggin' land. Yeah. So for me, I just don't ever see that. Now, you know, you know, one thing that that you and I were discussing earlier is that. Um, on vacations, I like to. I, I, I'm all about looking for opportunity. So when I work, I'm not looking for reasons to write off my trip. I'm looking for reasons to um, be productive and and go. Gosh, like I find areas, I find pockets that I'm in, and go. Gosh, this is a really cool little neat place. I wonder if they have foreclosures here, or wonder if they have property for sale or land for sale. And I'll go to the county tax collector website, and and Florida's a Florida. I think Florida's a deed. Is it a deed? I know Florida's a deed state, but they also have I think lien certificates as well. Right. Um, um, but, but looking at some of these county auctions, I mean, there's still some land. You can get some property for dirt cheap. People aren't touching land because they want the single family homes of these auctions and land is, you can just get, I mean, I saw property, no, you know, close to the beach in some of these areas for, you know, three or four grand a property. You can go sell that property for 25 grand all day long on terms. All oh day yeah. Long. All day long. So, yeah. Um, yeah. One, one of my students, Vic, he just emailed me. He, he, got a deal in Texas, two deals in Texas, and he's, he's paying four grand and the properties were 25,000. Wow. Yeah. I mean, and they're out there. That, they're and that's, out there. that's on his first letter writing campaign. Wow. Has that's no awesome. idea what he's doing, going through coaching, you know, and just this first letter writing campaign. It's, you know, that's a nice hit. Yeah. Yeah. It, and, and again, there's niches everywhere. It's not in one place. It's everywhere. America has so much to offer. If you live in a cool place, um, you know, go, if you live in a cool place, if you're near a cool place, if you're on vacation, just open your mind to what's around you. Don't, 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 you know, and, and look, if you're on vacation, enjoy your vacation. But what right. I'm saying is like, if there's a cool place, go figure out, is there land around here for sale? Because guess what? The chances are there is. And, and, and it's, and chances are if, if you did a letter on campaign, if you went and searched around the county site and you, you found that there was a tax auction or something going on, you're going to find the opportunity to buy really cheap land that has ex instant equity that you can go flip pretty quickly. 
Right, right. You know, I have, I have a question for you because I, I was driving uh, to Southern Arizona to an auction, and there's all these signs on the side of the road, land for sale, land for sale, land for sale. And I'm zooming by these these <laughs> these billboards for yeah. land for sale. Does anyone pull over and take down those numbers? I mean, I wonder, is that even an effective way to market? Is to have a is, billboard on the side of the road? No. People are so, going 75 miles per hour? No, no. And that's what's so interesting is that in, in the dilemma, and this goes back to, um, you know, what, what you're bringing uh, to the table for these people is that, that there's no effective marketing campaigns that are, you know, that are efficient when it comes to time and money that work, right? Like these guys that throw up these billboards, that probably takes a day or two to go put the signs up and set everything up. And then in reality, they're getting, they're getting zero traffic. Like you said, no, I mean, is somebody calling the, the fourth billboard they see because it's vacant land? No, you got to learn how to market your land. It's all about marketing. Marketing is yeah. what sells the property. You can paint a pretty picture. You can find the buyer and you're not tricking anybody. Hey, this is the property. Here's the GPS coordinates. Here's what it is. And if he's not local and he doesn't want to look at it and he wants to buy it, great. You found the buyer. You right. sold the property. You know, you painted the picture. You let them know where the property is. You told them to do this due diligence, and you sold them a property, and it was a great property. So, you know, it, it, and again, I'm 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 not saying that um, that those things don't work. I'm just saying that that in reality, you, there's a, you're you're a lot more effective. I think 85 to 90 percent of real estate buyers look online uh, before they purchase something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I I agree. I mean, I'm just wondering. If you've ever pulled over on the side of the road and taking down a number when you're when you're no. driving past land, but you know what will work very effectively is land when LandHub.com comes in and absolutely destroys that market and takes. I'm 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 actually buying land for billboard space. <laughs> you, you're <laughs> that's I am, great. I, it's a great it's a great way for a company to brand, but not for a person to brand. Right, right. Because I can I can just read LandHub.com and that'll stick in yeah. my head. Yeah, and, as, and as so opposed like to, you know, uh, a number land for sale, Correct. 160 acres for sale, called 702, you know, whatever. Like yeah. that, that, that's gone. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I have, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, now I'm, I have seen some some billboards with with websites, and that was much more effective. Yeah. No. If you go if you go get a website and you're looking if you're in Wilcox, Arizona, and you're looking for you know 40 acres of land, great. Yeah. You go you go to Land Hub and you type in Wilcox and you pop it up, but. Um, but you know, you pop up what you see, or you map, you know, because we'll we'll have a mapping feature as well, like the other sites do. But but again, it's it's uh, it, it, you know, it, it, it's more effective having a website and having having your property marketed correctly. Right, right, yeah, no, I, yeah, I I absolutely agree. I mean, really, at the end of the day, if you really want to break down the essence of this business, it's about buying an asset, pennies on the dollar, and then marketing it effectively. That's it. Correct. That's right. it. That's really that's really all it is, and yeah. you you can take this model and apply it to everything. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I just think land happens to be the best asset to buy because yeah. it's so easy to manage in the sense that there's no maintenance, there's no tenants. Um, they're, they're, you know, they're they're it's just easier. I mean, but yeah. you you could do the same thing with with any type of of asset, really. No, it, it, it all everything comes down to marketing. It's it's pretty simple. You can uh, you can if you can find the buyers, if you can create a niche, um, you you control that asset and uh, and theoretically the price of the asset. Right, right, exactly, exactly. And uh, and you and you can do different pricing models and, and play with it and yeah. and see, you know, where the market's at with it as well. So yeah. you you learn from that as well. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, so Mark, have you have you speaking of pricing model? Have you tried anything re uh, new recently that you're uh, working on that that uh, that's that's effective? Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's effective yet. Uh, I've got a, a a broker that is doing an online auction for me for some of my properties in Nevada, and so I'm trying out a, a new sales funnel um, or or a new sales platform. I, I don't know. If it's going to work or not, to tell you the truth, yeah. um, it's a new company. I don't know how much money they're spending on advertising. How many people are going to look at that online auction? But I'm trying it and, and seeing. 
And if it if yeah. it goes well, I'll share it with everybody, and and they can do that. But um, I think my broker's taking ten percent. But big deal because we're charging the buyer's premium of ten percent, so the buyer pays. Yeah. It. Got it. Yeah, but it, like it. what's making me nervous about it? it we're doing no reserve, so. Yeah, that that uh, that's that's. Uh... At one point, my life was not effective. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know no, that all I know. well. Uh, yeah, Mark, m m most most of the listeners, we, we've uh, we've Mark and I have tried many things that have been very successful. Um, and 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 I did one thing. I don't think Mark's ever failed, but I failed miserably once. What are you talking? Um, I, I fail every day, Duran. Um, I mean, you, you, you have no idea. Down. Every little thing I do, there's a failure. But it's true. But it's I learned from true. it. I mean, you know, this didn't work or that didn't work. But I just fail fast and, and learn from it. No, no, I agree. You're right. You know what? You're right. And but but this was a this was a big failure. It was a marketing campaign. I tried to liquidate about twenty thousand acres um, during the, the the boom of the market and didn't do a lot of research for this company. And the company was uh, geared toward agricultural equipment and not land. And uh, and so I made a I made a a bet. Uh, you know, I, I made a play at this and went out and tried to tried to auction off some property, a live auction, and it went very well. I mean it. It broke even, but it didn't go nearly as successful as I thought it would. So it wasn't that it wasn't that awful. But but again, going back to it, we've taken all the we've taken we've gone through all these journeys of, of trying to figure out platforms that work and don't work. And right. so because we failed, it's allowing you guys to succeed. Right. But that's that's the, that's really the terrible thing about marketing, is that you all you know what works today won't work tomorrow, right? It just won't. Yeah. You just can't slap something up like you could online 10 years ago and think it's going to sell in two days. It just, doesn't, you know, the, the, the buyers have changed, the platforms have changed, the rules have changed, you know, people get bored quickly and you've got to always be on the lookout and trying new things. And that's why I'm saying like, I fail every day. I'll, I'll do a, yeah. you know, I'll do a, a marketing campaign and it just will fall flat on its face. It's just yeah. the way it is. They don't yeah. all and, work. Know, yeah, and you know it's, it's interesting you say that. I was reading up a, a friend of mine uh, that I've been kind of giving a lot of uh, a lot of consulting um, advice to over like, I would say year, six months to a year. He's in the he's in the auto industry and 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 auto auto classified platforms are really similar to land. So I was really able to help him online, got to get coach him through some of the processes. Right. Um, and again, one of the cool things about learning this business is that you can take what you learn and you can go outside the actual, um, you know, role of real estate and go into other, you know, um, other aspects of business. And so anyway, long story short is um, he had been failing on a lot of these online platforms like autotrader.com and cars.com. And I said, listen, I said, those platforms are simply cl online classified sites and they are handcuffed to Google meaning that their rankings are, are dependent upon what Google's algorithm does. But as soon as things change, no longer are cars.com and autotrader are going to be viable platforms. Now, they, like right now they are, and, 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 but I believe they have to evolve with the internet, which means they have, to, they have to add more to their platform to become viable in 2014. A classified platform is going, it's kind of like a newspaper, right? The newspaper kind of comes and goes, right? right? Like the, the, print, the print is cool. There will always be people that will still read print, but at some point that that diminishes. So anyway, long story short is we had this we we had this conversation about why cars.com and autotrader weren't succeeding for him. Uh, and it's simply because there was nothing more to offer than a simple classified platform. There was no software behind that tool. And it you know it led me back to my landhub.com concept of well, guys, land sellers don't have a platform to go beyond their site, right? It's not just about one platform, it's about every platform. It's about right. being able to. It's about being able to market on multiple platforms because you can't assume that everyone's going to your platform. As much money as you put in branding, I don't care if you put in fifty billion dollars in branding. At the end of the day, Google still owns the algorithm and the search platform, so they're the ones that determine where that user goes. And if no longer, no matter how much branding you've done, they're, they're directed to your site, you're in trouble. So now, you know, going through this process of helping him understand it, it it, it helps me with land and everything else because I go, gosh, you know what? I look at these these websites and I go, gosh, you know what? They've got to evolve in order to stay alive. And and uh, cars.com is actually they're trying to sell it for between uh, I think I think I saw the number between one and three billion dollars. Um, and 
but but the question is, is it still a viable platform? Is it still going to be successful three to five years from now? I don't know, right? Like it goes back to, are they going to evolve? Are they going to create more? Are they going to create value adds for their customers to go beyond that simple search online search platform? So, um, you know, of selling classified space for a car, and uh, and so you know that's where I think the internet's going, and I think that eventually, um, like you said, it changes every day. So right, we always right. have to have, have our head on a swivel and look where where is the market going to be, you know, two months or three months or six months or a year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, reputation sites can take down a cars dot com. I mean, you know, I'll I'll look on Yelp for everything and just look at everybody's ratings. And so, if a dealership doesn't have good ratings on Yelp, I'm not going to work with them on Cars. dot com. Yeah, you know what I mean. No, t t totally. So you're hundred percent right. You know, you've got Angie's List, you've got Yelp, you've got all these, you know, sites that that will rate you now. And yeah. um, you know, so we're, we're living in this completely transparent world. So yeah. it's very, very tough to do. Uh, you know, have this platform that doesn't have you know, a tremendous amount of value. And same thing goes for your land, right? And yeah. you, you've got to look at different marketing platforms, but know that you can't ever rely on just one platform. So, yeah. you know, there, and, and I think depending on the property and the price of the property, like let's, t let's take Vic's property, right? That he's going to sell for $25,000. Because of the margin in that, it might make more sense for him instead of slapping it up on a Craigslist. I would do that too. But why not do a targeted uh, postcard to people, to, you know, to the neighbors and to the other people in the area that might be good buyers for that property? Exactly. And the, you, know, you know, the builders. You know, another thing that people fail to understand is that Facebook is a great way to target. You can target by, you know, city. You can target by you know, demographic, age, sex, um, you know, um, particular, you know, particular, you know, fan page likes, whether it's business or real estate. So there's a lot of ways that you can market in social media, obviously with, you know, YouTube videos and, and obviously Facebook, um, and, and outside of that Twitter and everything else, you, there are ways to market that and target market, um, people that are inside that demographic of, of neighbors. So you, you may do a mailing campaign and a Facebook campaign targeting that specific demographic. Right, right. So now you're talking about pay-per-click on Facebook, correct? Correct. Okay, so how much does that cost? Or does it does it just determine the, or like the keywords? How does that work? Because I know with Google, you got to bid on keywords. How, how does it, it work on so, Facebook? It, it, there's, 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 um, uh, there, there's, so basically what happens, Facebook's a lot different than, than Google and then, and then similar in a way, right? So there's a price, there's like a cost per impression or a, um, there's, there's a way that they gauge what the cost per click or cost per thousand impressions is. Um, and that's their own sort of algorithm they've created. Um, so, so in, in, in a, in a, in a smaller area like that, it may be a lot easier and a lot cheaper to target. Like I do know that like if you're running international campaigns, it's a lot cheaper than it would be on a, on a campaign in the U.S. So if like you're looking for English speaking people in Philippines that, to invest in land, you can go target an area in the Philippines that's very cheap compared to the U.S. Um, so, you know, that's just a, you know, a hint that if you ever try to target a specific market and there are plenty of people in the Philippines that speak English as a first language um, that would love to own property in the U.S. But um, going back to it, you, areas like smaller pockets that aren't really focused from a demographic standpoint. Like if you're trying to hit Tyler, Texas, for example, your, your chances of competing with people in Tyler, Texas compared to Hollywood, California are totally different. So your costs would probably be a little cheaper, um, but it sort of depends on, again, that demographic you're going after. Yeah, you know, you know what we should do? Let's do a screencast and show people step-by-step -step how to create a Facebook pay-per-click campaign. I think nope, that'd be... Have to pay. Nope, sorry, sorry, by the way, they're gonna have to pay me 1995. To uh, to run to that program, nineteen, <laughs> <laughs> or or you can pay Duran's consulting fee, and, and, and he'll he'll do exactly. it for you. So the, exactly. the the done for you program with Duran or our screencast if you want to do it yourself. <laughs> but you know there is I mean there is some some method of madness. I mean I, I've done some professional pay per click campaigns. I don't get involved in them at all. I hire a guy. That's what he does all day long. He creates these ads and he tries to get the cost down, uh, you know, per click. And, you know, if we can, if we can build our list that way, 
then it's great. It's great. And you, you can set a daily budget too. So you can test yeah. it real easily. I think mm -hmm. when we first started, we, our budget was like 50 bucks for the day. Yeah. Or, or even less, maybe even you know, less than that. I forget. Yeah. And, and one, one of the things you do and, and you work on is kind of sort of targeting that niche by, uh, uh, and by finding it. So you've got to spend, you've got to, you've got to, you know, it, it takes money to make money on the marketing side. Like if you're really trying to find the niche, you got to spend money to get there. And, and, and when I say that it's not a lot of money, but you know, you, if you, if you've got a thousand dollar budget for the month, spend the first 500 bucks in the first week so that you can sort of figure out what is my niche, who are right. the people clicking, you know, and, and really because Facebook does have a great insights program that, that lets you see what's going on. Um, and, and that's, you know, it comes down to, you know, sort of the, you know, understanding the conversions, understanding the process of who's, who's clicking on your property, who's looking at your property, who's buying your property. Um, right. Because once, once you find those people, once you realize, um, you know, who's, who's intrigued by a concept of owning 40 acres of land in Nevada or owning, uh, you know, a one acre piece by the beach in Florida, um, once you figure that out, then you start targeting that specific niche. You go after a particular demographic. Exactly. Exactly. And and it shouldn't cost that much to do. And then once you have that that OSS optimal selling strategy, you just keep doing that until it doesn't work anymore. Correct. And um, Correct. that's that's a great way to sell a lot of land really fast. Yep. Yep. Totally agree. So. Um, Mark, you know, I, I think it's almost that time, and since I'm sitting here staring at a beautiful ocean here on the Atlantic, <laughs> um, and then uh, in about a day and a half, we'll be back on the Pacific side, um, I think it's time for the uh, tip of the week, buddy. All right. Hey, uh, I appreciate it that you're taking time out again, so just want you to know. I, ho I hope you're feeling the love. I hope the listeners I, are I, feeling the love that Duran's yes. actually doing this. Yes. Yeah, because, you know, last week I sent out the podcast – uh, just one of our our better ones, just a repeat, saying, "Hey, I'm on vacation. Listen to this one again." Yeah. So, all and right. I, 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 before we go on, I just want to say, um, I, you know, the, since the conference, I've received a lot of emails, kind of like fan love, which which I really appreciate. Um, some of the people at the conference, some of the people that weren't at the conference, um, that have just listened to the podcast. Thank you very much uh, for the kind emails. Um, I, I would love to be able to help a lot of people that have that have reached out to me. Unfortunately, my my time is uh, valuable with the family. Um, I have to enjoy my my uh, my vacations, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I do my best to get back to everybody. But uh, you know, I, I, as as I as I move into launching my new program, which Mark and I will talk about in the coming weeks, um, I, I I will do my best to get back to people and, and let them know what what I'm working on and how I can help them. Yeah, I'm I'm excited about it, but I think until we get this thing locked down, it's probably premature to talk about now. Yes, no, hundred percent. So I agree. But I just just letting everybody know, thank you. I appreciate the support, and uh, and I will do my best to uh, to get back to all you. And I'm I'm sure Mark has a lot more fan mail than I do. So uh, he just he just has eight employees managing it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have eight VAs around, around awesome. the clock checking out That's the fan perfect. mail. All That's right. Perfect. So well, what is your, your tip, tip buddy? No, do you, you have, do you have a tip of the week? Dude, I, yeah, sure. Okay, guys. Well, listen, you guys, a couple things. One is I, I got an email this morning. 90, 99designs just launched a brand new platform. Um, I forget what they call the, the program, but it's basically, I think it's 15 bucks, and you can get something done within the hour. So it's kind of like a fiver, but like a fiver right away. Um, but fiver times three, it's 15 bucks, but you get something done immediately. So if you need something design-wise done quickly, it, you get it done. So it's, it's no longer a contest. I don't think I haven't looked at the program, but it's but but look at 99 designs and look at the brand new platform they just rolled out in the last week or so. Um, I think if you need something done within an hour, they've got designers that can get it done within the hour. So which I think is really cool because for me, I love getting things done immediately. I don't like wasting time. I like having an employee there right now. Hey, uh, you know, Steve, you're my graphic designer. I need it done within the hour. That's always hard. When you've got a, you know, VAs, it can work. But if your VA is in the Philippines and you're, it's three o'clock in the afternoon and someone in the U.S. they're asleep. So I, I do really like that aspect. Um, going back to that concept, there's another comp, there's another website called CrowdSpring.com, really similar to 99designs. It is a crowd sourcing platform for graphic designers of all sorts. So check that out. That's my tip of the week. It's not that sexy, but it's sexy enough to get you to click on it. All right, great, great. All right, my tip of the week is a due diligence tip. So you can find the GPS coordinates for the 17 Western states. I'm not sure if I 
I might have given this one in the past, but I do like you it. Say, hold, on, hold on. Did you say 17 Russian states? No, Western states. Oh, okay. Just check it out. Yeah. Our, yeah. So <laughs> Arizona, California, Colorado, Idaho, Kansas I'm, is in there, Montana, North Dakota, uh, New Mexico, Nevada, et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, check it out. It's www.esg.montana.edu slash gl forward slash trs dash data dot html i know that's a lot i'll have a link to it in the notes so don't worry about it but all you do is you put in the township range section and your state meridian and it'll give you the uh the, the middle of the section the gps coordinates so it's pretty great i love it all right it. well duran again thank you so much you feel good you're gonna have a so just one more day right one more day you know i i uh i had a blast hung out with the uh, the in-laws the family my wife the kids everybody and actually did minimal work uh in 10 days which is the way i like it which is the way it usually is but um i do spend a little bit more time working on the uh, on the west side of the u.s so uh it's time to get back to work and uh keep going so but great all right well thanks again check out duran landhub.com Get some wholesale land from him, reserveland.com. Shoot him an email. Express your appreciation for the fact that he's with his kids by the pool near the beach and still taking time to podcast for all of us. And, uh, hey, if Duran doesn't have any wholesale land you want, go to frontierpropertiesusa.com. And don't forget to go to uh, thelandgeek.com, www.thelandgeek.com. Download the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal, fatal Land Buying Mistakes. And of course, get this wonderfully informative and engaging podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. This is Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek with Duran Frazier. Hey, I really appreciate everyone who's listening, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.